Argentina have won the World Cup. Lionel Messi's won the World Cup. It's an amazing game in the final. Argentina have beaten France. But how did they do it? How did France get back into the game? So first of all, we need to work out what both managers were trying to do and what actually happened in their strategic minds. So Argentina's shape was sort of like a 4-3-1 one wild card because what they had was this kind of strange shape it was a back four where the full backs don't get too far forward Fernandez always protecting the back two then you got McAllister and DePaul in this midfield bit here and DePaul's role is very much to help out Messi who doesn't do very much defensively Messi's role is to be around all this part of the pitch and his touch map shows that's exactly what he did in this final to try and affect play in these dangerous areas doesn't do a lot of defending, that's where DePaul comes in to help be almost like his bodyguard, right? So he comes in to help win the ball in this sort of area. Now that's really relevant having DePaul on the side of the pitch next to Molina, the fullback, because Mbappe plays there. Now a lot of teams focus how they set up to deal specifically with Mbappe on this left-hand side. England, for example, put Jordan Henderson on this right side of a midfield three so that he'd come across and help out. But not Argentina, they didn't do that. They sort of focused in another way of getting rid of Mbappe's influence and a lot of it to do with putting Di Maria wide on the left. So although he started in the, like a right midfield position from when the game kicked off, it was kind of odd, he actually goes over to this left side here. So you've got Alvarez, the central striker, Messi floating in behind him, but Di Maria is over here. So he's creating a lot of space between these two. And one of the reasons for having Di Maria out wide here is because France's team changes shape when they move into different phases of play. So it's a back four when you look at it on the team lineup, but actually, Theo Hernandez is a, a fullback who goes up, and Mbappe comes inside the pitch like here. Up Meccano pushes across, Brand pushes across, Kunde becomes another centre back. So he's a right back, but really he's a centre back. So uh, he doesn't want to be out here, he's kind of in here like this. And then they're protected by two midfielders. Griezmann and Giroud are meant to be the first line of press. They both got substituted at some point in the game. Giroud in the first half, not good for him. Then Dembele, wide right winger here. So what you've got is Argentina trying to pass uh, through the middle of the pitch. And so when Argentina pushed forward, you had McAllister. He was brilliant in this final, by the way. Uh, he pushes forward to like this bit here. Messi's here, DePaul might join in. Fernandez around a bit here. And so what you actually get is some sort of a midfield diamond with Messi being the tip of the diamond. It looks like a box. <laughs> it's a diamond, just trust me on that. This is what I'm talking about, the diamond. Messi, McAllister, Fernandez, DePaul. That's the diamond here. Alvarez is spare as a central forward. Really important on the ball, but absolutely crucial to how Argentina win the ball back. This guy forces the ball back all the time. Di Maria out wide here. So this is what I'm talking about. The full backs don't get too far forward. Fernandez anchors it all. That's what's going on. Because France just couldn't keep the ball. Look, there, there's just nothing here. All wide. And a lot of that is because Argentina realised the way to try and beat France is not to try and block the wide spaces, it's to put everything in the middle of the pitch and play through the middle. So when you're playing against a press of, well it's not, it's not a press, it's Griezmann and Giroud, you can easily go past them. And what France do and have done throughout this tournament is defend very passively in the first line. So what you'll get is although it looks like Giroud and Griezmann trying to be the front two, often what will happen is Griezmann drops back into midfield to be like an extra eight, then Giroud is joined by Mbappe. Uh, in this sort of shape here. So what happens is that Rabiot pushes across, Griezmann goes in there, Chouameni's there, Dembele's there. So you get a 4-4-2 block when they get past the first bunch of players. But what actually happens is Fernandez is often out wide, so you've got more as this middle three here. So the midfielders are trying to cover an awful lot of space in the middle. If it's Rabiot and Chouameni, what you get is that Messi's drifting around, driving Rabiot out of position. Doing that then means that Alvarez, McAllister, DePaul, Fernandez have all this pitch. Like this is all the midfield that they then have control of because of what Messi's doing, dragging Rabiot out of the way. Alvarez can play to the middle. So Argentina effectively got in control of the game by mastering the midfield, being really aggressive, determined, win the ball back early. Rodrigo DePaul is central for that. And it also helped that France were just rubbish from the very start. So what you had was them making these easy, like five, 10 yard passes of McCann to Hernandez, with no power on it, no accuracy. The ball snipping in to win the ball and driving them forward to get shots at goal. That's what happened. France couldn't get it. You saw it in the passing map, just couldn't keep the ball, trying to get the ball to Mbappe. Mbappe would be closed down, have to go backwards and work it all around. France were nowhere near it. And then you see the way that Argentina scored their first goal. We're talking about Di Maria being out wide here. So they were constantly playing, well not constantly, but often, this long ball out to Di Maria on this wide area. Because then he's isolated 1v1 versus a fullback. And because he's wide and Kunde's not really in this space, he's in this space, not that one. But Di Maria is in this space, <laughs> not that one. <laughs> so it's a little tactical uh, tic-tac-toe they're trying to play here. Now, Kunde's got to make a decision when the ball's out here. The ball kept going over his head, sailing to Di Maria. 
So he was wanting to stay closer to his centre backs to make sure they're keeping their shape. They want the shape defensively to be a bit like this. Eventually, uh, Hernandez will come across like that because, like we said, it's kind of like a back. Well, it's a two lines of four essentially is what you want because this guy doesn't count as a defender. He doesn't do anything. It's fine. So Dem Bailey's actually the fullback in the situation. It's Di Maria when the ball comes to him. Di Maria turns him inside out gets put around him, into the box, that's where the foul comes. Dembele is not a fullback, he's a very attacking winger. Good player, but uh, not good enough to avoid being hauled off as a substitute inside the first half. Bad news for Dembele. And that's the penalty that Argentina score. That's them 1-0 up. France need to get back into this game. They're losing that as bad. They start pushing players forward. Mbappe playing through the middle. Griezmann up, sub, up top as well. Dembele up top, what you want. Uh, Rabiot and Chumini trying to push into midfield, try and get hold of it. And of course, when you do that, you're pushing more players up. And when you push more players up, you're going to leave yourself a lot of space in behind if you push your line really high up the pitch. Argentina throughout the Copa America that they won and World Cup qualifying uh, started the games really hot, take the lead, and then they would just sit back like this to exploit exactly the space in behind for someone like Di Maria. But it's not like they're playing the ball in behind every single time, they're just attacking the space really quickly. And the second goal that Argentina score that gets them into the game comes from France trying to play by pushing the line up and trying to force their way back into the game. Up Meccano has the ball, he forces it forward, it turns over, and then suddenly because they're so far forward, what you get is a bunch of players who are ready to exploit this space. is gonna break as well. So very quickly, this shape, this is how it looks for the start of the second goal, becomes a France back three as they, they hurry to get back into their shape. I think Rabiot joins in as well, maybe Chiumini, you can't remember who it was. But the ball moves forward quickly with Argentina, Messi flicks around the corner for Alvarez comes inside. And then what you get is Di Maria turning up on the far side of Koundé because they don't have that full back position there. And that's where he scores from getting in behind this last full back here to score the back post. That's how Argentina score their second goal. They now have total control. France are in a real predicament. So what do they do? How do they get back into the game? Well, the solution is substitutions and a change of system. Now, first things first, we know that this right space is a trouble, is a bit of a problem with Koundé uh, trying to play as a centre back and a full back at different times, again, isolated. Varane up and Meccano are meant to be here, Teo Hernandez the full back. So what he does eventually, there's a few changes he makes. First off, Giro comes off, offered absolutely nothing defensively. That's fine. On comes Kolo Muani to replace him. Uh, not dissimilar in styles, but different kinds of players. Griezmann still starts through this area here, and what you get also is Dembele gets taken off for Marcus Turam, who is a fantastic, really fast winger who can play on that side of the pitch. That's what you get, and Bappe's over here. Then, this is, doesn't really work quite the way you want it to. You still need to have two midfield being dragged around by Messi with Rabio. So what he changes is Teo Hernandez comes off for Camavinga, central midfielder for Real Madrid. He then plays as a very uh, busy left back, helping keep Rabio in the middle of the pitch with Chiumeni. He can help deal with this messy threat. He doesn't push forward like Teo Hernandez, he stays very much there. Kunde then becomes an outright uh, right back, just very normal. St seeing the space now, so you know exactly what his role is, with two centre backs protecting that. Camavinga is a left back, so you get straight four. Then you've got the two of Chiumeni and Rabio. That's going to work. That's going to work for you. Then Griezmann comes off. He is replaced by Komen. But Komen is a winger, so he then goes out to the wing. Churam's on the left. So now what you've got is four really fast players, really quick, trying to play in behind the fullbacks, which then keeps Argentina's fullbacks even deeper, which means that Paul has then got to worry what he's doing, because Messi's offering nothing in the side, remember? And France basically have a defensive block to be able to deal with any problems that Argentina can cause in the counter-attack, and all they're sending forward is Alvarez, Messi, maybe Di Maria, but then he comes off to be replaced by Acuna, because what happens while France are making these changes is Argentina change their approach as well. What Argentina do is lock it down too soon. You think you're winning, you're 2-0 up, you're coasting through the game, you think that's fine. And we know this is what happens because you can see the pressing stops being uh, so quite so high up the pitch. And uh, also the defensive line pulls back a little bit. The deeper you go, the more pressure you'll get from the opponent and you're inviting chances, inviting them to have a way back into the game. You don't want that, you can see it. Look at all the momentum. This is the goal probability throughout the game. All Argentina, totally in control, have the game, and then do France make the changes, substitutions right there, and Argentina start to play in a different way. They don't, they aren't defending in the same way, they're not as uh, cohesive, something's changed. Is it mental state? Is it World Cup final? It's a big game, that could be why. And then we see the goal that France scored to get back in the game from the very start. The changes have all been made, they're, they're coming right into it late in the game, 78 minutes. It's a simple throw-in that Argentina have. And whether this is tactical or just a, something that goes wrong with players at this stage of a game, I can't really be sure. Because what you can see, Argentina very narrow. There's a very narrow shape that they've got here. There's no one really wide. Uh, the ball is thrown. 
uh, from the right back to the midfielder and go back to the right back. He then puts the ball forward. The ball turns over. And then what you want to have when the ball turns over is a good rest defense shape. You want to make sure that you are compact. There's no space in behind or in the middle for France to play to. But what France have done is get all these fast players. One, two, three, there's another one over here somewhere back the way in the state where they can put the ball over the top, get in behind. Because now Argentina are leaving space behind, they're not able to react, the ball goes over the top. Otamendi is caught in a race with a very, very quick player. Uh, at this point here, he should just put the ball into the stands. Doesn't quite get the bounce, can't quite do it, has to take him on. He knows he's in trouble, gets the box, brings him down. That's how France get the penalty. It's a simple turnover. France have exploited one mistake and that Argentina made in the entire game. That's how France play. That's also how Argentina play. And so Argentina tried to lock it down further. They're still trying to lock it down, keep things calm. Messi tries a bit too much, tries to dribble down through the pitch. Is easily uh, robbed of the ball by Kingsley Coman, playing on the right here. And so then Kingsley Coman runs up the wing, comes inside the pitch, and another mistake is how France score. It's just simple errors that happen at this level. Mbappe, here he is, marked by the right back Molina. Rabio puts the ball into Mbappe, Mbappe heads it on to Churam, who's going to put the ball back through the space here. Now the mistake is that Molina, as soon as Mbappe turns, should go with him, but he doesn't. He, he loses the ball from the header, he stops, Mbappe goes in the space, and that's the only mistake that he makes in this situation, and that's how Mbappe gets in the score. An amazing finish, but that's the sort of thing we're dealing with, like tiny, tiny errors. France then get back into the game, it goes all nuts in extra time, and then what you see is Argentina take the lead, uh, and it's to do with this shape that France have. The move starts deep, the ball is cleared, the front four are trying to uh, win the ball back but they can't, there's no midfield, the ball goes over the top of them and what you get is Lotaro takes the ball down, brilliant touch, not aggressive enough from Lopa Meccano over here of Camavinga, the ball then moves into Messi who comes into the pitch. So what you see, if you have two players, this is what it looks like, Fernandez and Lotaro here, they're dealing with the two centre-backs, there's obviously a big problem because there's a big gap these guys have basically got a triangle. Messi can do whatever he wants to. He can play the ball into, I think it's Fernandez. Doesn't really matter. The ball comes in. Then the ball is shot by someone else. Doesn't matter who it is at this point. Parried by the goalkeeper, Messi scores. And it's just a little bit to do with France trying to win the game with this new shape. The little hole opens up for Messi. Another tiny error. <laughs> There's nothing you can really do about it. Then France managed to get back into it. They keep pushing. And Mbappe forces a shot that gets a penalty. Back in the game. It was just crazy. You can't really analyze some of this stuff. This is what they were trying to do. A lot of the stuff that happened was just magic by individual players. McAllister was brilliant, Messi was incredible, Mbappe scored a hat-trick, he was brilliant. Later, not at the start of the game, because he's hardly getting it as we saw, he's mostly out here until they managed to make the changes, where he put him through the middle and can affect the game. So, all in all, that's sort of what happened. A lot of stuff happened that I can't really show you on this board, because it's just to do with the insides of players' minds. And I don't have access to players' minds, yet. And if you'd like to see when I do eventually find my way to control players' minds, well, subscribe to the channel, because maybe we'll have that technology one day. <laughs> I don't know when. Whoa, I'm tired now. It's been a long World Cup. Thanks for watching all our videos. Uh, really hope you've enjoyed them. If you do, yeah, I can say subscribe and we'll check you out with more videos coming because the football doesn't stop ever. There's more Premier League games coming, loads of stuff. Thanks for watching. Enjoy yourselves. Goodbye. If you liked today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you did like it, you might be interested in How to Watch Football, TIFO's illustrated book. It's 52 rules for understanding the beautiful game on and off the pitch, and it is the perfect holiday gift. How to Watch Football is out now in stores and online. See the link in the description to find out more, and thank you for watching today's video.